Hello everybody. So today I've got uh, an M1 Grand here. If you are living under a rock, that's the uh, service rifle from World War II uh, up until Korean War and some will argue parts of Vietnam as well. So it is an M1 Grand. Um, this is the original stock here. This is right here. And this is a refinished part on the top. That's why you'll notice the discoloration uh, compared to the other parts of wood. Uh, so, got it here. Um, what we're going to do today, what I want to do today is just take a couple, couple cracks at it. Take a couple shots, see how it does. I haven't fired it since I got it. And I got it about three weeks ago. Um, it's a Springfield. Um, I'll put the, the serial number in the description, um, but what the serial number says is that it was manufactured um, sometime January, February of 1941, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, again, just making this video, showing you guys how it fires, um, what it's like, how the test shots go. Uh, again, I think I said it already, but I haven't fired this yet. Um, I ordered it through the CMP, um, the Civilian Marksmanship Program, if you're familiar with that. Um, there's a couple of things you got to do to order one to get one, but it wasn't that bad. Um, so that's where this came from. All right, one thing I wanted to cover uh, before we get too far along um, and into shooting is how to load these end block clips. Uh, I will say it's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, to get him going, uh, but I'll try to try to get this recorded while I'm doing it um, So that if you've got one you can or if you just got one like I did you can try to fumble through it and and see if it works so The way to load these up And it's kind of you gotta just feel it. I guess I'll try to show it nicely, but you kind of want to get two shells in You want to put one kind of on that that rear side yeah I know you're running for ammo in a second here but you want to put it to that that left side and then put the other one to the right side and I'm going to show how long it takes and how much I struggle just because that's part of the process um, and hopefully that helps you out if you're looking at doing this or looking to, to load them so there I got three in again you want to kind of load it like a like you're loading a regular, um, like a, what am I trying to say here? Bolt action rifle, um, top fed where you just shove them, shove them down the top. So you got three in and you kind of want to put some steady pressure on them uh, with one hand as you drop the other one in. It will see if I can pull it off. There we go. Got the fourth one in. There we go. We're looking good. Again, you might be able to see it. If not, I apologize. Uh, but see if you let go at all, let pressure off. Um, they're going to try to shake out on you and fall back out. So what do I got in there? I got five in there. And I was told once you get the sixth, then you can... Yeah, so there's a sixth. Yeah, they still want to come out. But you can feed them a little bit better uh, from the top then this way. There's seven. And then that should kind of be holding itself. Uh, it's a little bit, but not really. Seven. And then there's that last one, eight. Um, yeah, and so now I've let go. It is kind of, it is holding itself on uh, that orientation, as you can see. So I just got to put the last one in. And just squeezing down, bam, made it look harder than it probably was. Um, got the last one in. There's your classic looking clip that you see from World War II video shows hanging up, hanging off of people on the slings, that kind of stuff. I do want to say we're shooting some Remington Core Locks. Um, it was just the ammo that I could get. I uh, also read online, um, and when I say it's ammo that I can get, I read online 
Uh, you want to do about 150 grains, uh, 30 out six, when you're shooting an M1 Grand. I don't know, I'm just going to go with it. I heard you can be fine shooting more than that. Heavier weight bullets, 162s. That's what the guy at the gun shop said. Um, he runs through his, 180, things like that. But I'm going to play it safe for the first time uh, and use the 150 grains. All right, back out at the range. So once we get our clip loaded, um, we can load our M1 Grand. So I'll just come closer. I uh, hope you can see it. Uh, let's see, yep, that's a good view. Uh, so to load it, just like movies, video games, TV shows, whatever it is, uh, what you wanna do, obviously have it in a safe direction to start, but what you wanna do is have the clip all the way back and then this is the key part. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you've seen it, uh, but it's called Grand Thumb or M1 Grand Thumb, uh, or Grand Finger, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's when this bolt smashes forward and you put the clip down and you get your finger pinched in there. So to avoid that, what we want to do is put our hands tight to the bolt right here, kind of hold it back. And then with our thumb, press the bullets in. Um, and then you heard it click and then either push it forward uh, or it'll go forward automatically so in this case i'm going to just slap it forward here and i'll be ready to rock and roll and then i'm pointing in a safe direction down range um, i'll slap it in bam we're ready to rock and roll um, and that's pretty much it all right so we got our m1 grand loaded here uh, she's ready to rock and roll right now, pointed down range, I uh, set up this uh, kind of holder thing previously um, and I'm not worried necessarily about uh, accuracy, I just want to shoot the dang thing, uh, see, I'll make sure it shoots, make sure it doesn't blow up on me or something stupid, uh, then make sure that it, it cycles rounds properly. So we'll see what I end up feeling like doing, but I'm probably gonna take a couple, um, and then I'm just gonna just gonna unload it. If things are going good, I might take a couple more, uh, but we'll see. We'll just see where it's hitting after that. Uh, also, we range find it. Uh, we're at 50 yards, so I know uh, if we were doing a sight in, just kind of where I'm at. So I'm gonna put my ears on, and then we're gonna get ready to shoot. trying to get carried away uh, then we're going to point it in a safe direction I'm just going to unload it going to try to unload it safely there we go I learned that little trick too I'll cover that in a second uh, <laughs> but there's a, a trick to pop that that clip out So I am just curious, I want to see where we're hitting, uh, that's why I'm deciding uh, to unload it and start fresh. But overall happy, it shot those three rounds pretty damn good, um, but yeah, like I said, I just want to see where we're at then uh, when we get down range. Alright, so we're down range, uh, if you haven't found where the shots are, Pretty interesting. I was aiming dead on right here uh, for all of them, this general area. And so I'm gonna have to make adjustments. This is a damn well uh, little group here. Uh, but as you can see, we're high and we're to the left. Um, again, those three shots, I am happy with where those ended up. This thing is gonna be a nice, nice shooter uh, once I get it sighted in or dialed in. 
All right, I couldn't help myself. I said I wasn't gonna make any adjustments or try to slide it in, um, but I did make a couple adjustments right here uh, to the height. You're gonna see if that brings that, uh, brings those shots down closer to the, the center. And then I tried the windage. Uh, you can kind of see the, the notch there. Yeah, it's kind of hard, but the center one is right at zero. And then I'm pushing it a little bit the sight backside a little bit to the right um, and if I'm thinking about this correctly um, which I don't know then I think if you move that to the right I think about it again then that should move your shot to the right but again I gotta, I gotta think about this all right so I made my adjustments and honestly I'm having a hard time here but I think I shot over here again, like there was no change. Hopefully that's not the case, but pretty sure that looks like it wasn't there before. All right. So I just wanted to take a little pause here because I learned something just a few minutes ago. Uh, I learned how to load this thing with well, at least two shots instead of putting in the full weight and then see what I did. I had to pull the, pull the action open and click the side button. Uh, that's the secret there. There's this little side button. Um, the clip's just in, you just press that ping, it comes out, makes that classic sound um, that we all enjoy hearing and that, that you need to have with an M1 Grand. The main, the main thing with it is that beautiful ping of freedom. Anyway, uh, to load, to not hear that with an empty, um, or when you're trying to get it empty, a way to load it is by setting this clip in when it's empty, and then, again, I'll try not to smack my fingers. I did it great, of course, off camera, messing around with it, uh, but we'll see how I do here. But... Essentially all I did, put the clip in empty, kind of pull it like this, slip one round in right there, and then just slip the next in where you think it needs to be. Um, and then again, we're keeping in mind this bad boy right here, I'll just hold it with my thumb, screw it, and then I'll press these guys in until they click. And hopefully you can see that on the video, it clicked. So they're in, and then let go of my uh, bolt there and we're loaded with two rounds instead of eight and having to mess around and pull them out and click the button and dump them all over the ground. All right, so my little bit of Kentucky windage adjustments kind of worked. I'm dead, dead next to each other those first two. Uh, I was aiming down at that circle. Um, I'm starting to think I did make adjustments. I must have went the wrong way for both. Because um, that seems higher. Maybe it's not. Maybe nothing changed. But it seems a little bit higher. What I'm probably going to do is take two more. Um, again, just aiming down to the side. I want to get close to that, that center point. Um, and then pretty much call it good. Call it a success if all goes well with that. So up there, I was talking about the power of the 30-06. Here's just a little bit of a visual. You saw it ripping through there. There's a couple of nails that it cut through, it looks like. But also, the back of my post ate those last two. Uh, you can see it splintered up. The bullet passed right through with ease. Uh, that pine and kept on going. If that crow was in its line of path, that thing would have got it too. Uh, it looks like it missed that. He's still upright. All right, so here we go. Again, I'm just going to Kentucky windage this thing again. Uh, we're going to use my fancy little trick here. That I think I'm so cool, but probably everybody else knows already. Uh, going to load two more. Again, I just want to try to hit the center of the bullseye. Release, and we're ready to... The rock and roll 
down ear plugs and we'll aim off the target which if you're hunting or something like that generally you don't want to be aiming off the target uh, but we're going to try it here see if we can get that center bullseye uh, then i'll be happy and call it a day if not then i'm going to stay out here for six hours until i hit it just kidding Well, there we have it. I made too much adjustment. Now I'm way, way over there. And you can see I at least got a little bit lower progressively from the top. From the top to the middle to the bottom, I dropped that. I should have went farther down. That's all right. Ah, all right, maybe I'll take two more and then that's it. All right, so again, I don't know, I want to hit a little bit better. Uh, want to shoot closer to that, that bullseye. Um, so, I promise this is the last two. Alright, so we're hot. I'm going to see if I can get that bullseye. If not, Whatever, we'll try again a different day. Once I actually figure out how to adjust the sight. That looks better. But we'll go check it out. I'm telling you right now, if that was anywhere near the bullseye, I'm done. I'm calling it a day. All right, sweet. Don't know if that was the first one or the second one, but. I am happy with that from my quote-unquote horseshoe adjustments. I uh, got that close with just aiming down here, actually. That's good enough. I'll figure out, probably take this with me and figure out uh, if I can make some adjustments on how to do that to actually hit pretty straight. So, sweet. And I guess, yeah, I got to show it. Those last two are pretty much square on this post. And they uh, they annihilated that post. See the, the wood sticking out, splintered out. It's a nice round, that 30 out six, jeesh. Yeah, straight through. All right, just wanna close this video out. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in to see an M1 Grand Fire. Uh, again, this gun's new to me, but also I've never shot an M1 Grand in my life, so this was a first for for me on that. Um, never loaded one, never operated one, never shot one, so it was cool uh, to see this thing in action. Hopefully you either learned something, um, or if not that, at the very least, just got to see it operate and think it was cool. Uh, it's great that, you know, this one specifically made 1941 rolling off the, the assembly line was able to still shoot again we got to work on shooting accurately but still still shoot still cycle all that good stuff uh, pretty close to new uh, in my opinion again I don't know much much about them other than what I've learned the last couple of weeks with getting one um, but again hope you learned something thanks for watching again um, if all goes well if you get comments or if I get any comments or I get a lot of uh, a lot of talk, which I probably won't, I might make another video um, showing me sighted in. I'll probably I'll have to sight it in anyway. I might as well just film that. Um, that way, if you have one, if you 
just got one or are looking to sight in your grandpa's or whatever, you, you inherited one, and you kind of know what to do from me fumbling through it uh, uh, to get it done. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Cue the slow motion clip. Thank you.